Oh, hey guys! It's Jordy here from Cinecam.net and welcome back to another episode of Copycat Friday. Now today is going to be different. And when I mean different, it's not going to be like a recreation of an existing effect. We're actually looking at the Olympic Games today and we're going to try and cheat a little bit. We're going to try today and set a new world record using some Viavix magic. So without further ado, let's sprint into it. Dat is niet goed, hè, jong. Potverdorie, hè. Ah, ik wist dat dat ging gebeuren in een miljard. Before we show you guys how we made the effect, we first of course need to know which effect we're going to make. And we already have three IDs, so we're going to test them out first. I'm no Olympian. Oh my, that was actually very bad. Oh, what a dumbass! Hussein Bolt! Hussein Bolt? Who is that? After shooting, it was time to make rough, but I mean a really rough effects and choose which one we wanted to continue with. We have an Olympic lift, a long jump and a boxing effect. Yeah, we couldn't figure out how to make that one work properly in time. So we decided to go with the long jump. In our rub effect, you can see the movement doesn't match at all. Jordy's back leg is not moving and that's because we tried this on a stool. But of course, we already have a solution for that, which we'll show you later in this video. What I want to show you guys right now is something really cool. Since it's the Olympics, I made my own sport called speed editing. And I have been training very well, if I say so myself. In only 10 minutes, I'm able to create lower thirds, cool logo animations, flashy transitions and and even overlays. Oh, you don't believe me? I'll fill you in on the secret. I use Storyblocks, our sponsor for today's video. Storyblocks is a huge stock library filled with stock footage in HD and 4K resolution. All the lower thirds, logo animations, transitions and overlays I straight up downloaded from their website. Which helps a lot when you compete in speed editing. It saves you so much time. And the best of all is that you only have to pay a single price per year to have unlimited downloads. So don't wait any longer and go to the first link in the description down below for more info. Fun fact guys, we want spot sponsored a basketball team and they printed our logo here on the shorts and after the game we got the shorts and now it's mine. And of course we can't forget about the flame shoes, it makes me go super fast. Go sports! Go team! Go sports! This is my secret sport juice, coffee. Oh, I'm starting to feel fast. <laughs> Official Olympic measurements. So, just to put things in perspective, guys, this is what the real guys over at the Olympics do. This is insane. <laughs> oh, mom! <laughs> How do they do it? I call bad wind. Otherwise, over there. So, what do you think, Lorenzo? Uh, I think Jordy will. He will uh, get to like a meter and a half, I think. The question here is, what is Jordy doing? <laughs> Get out of the way! Get away! Get out of the way! You know, it's tough being an athlete.
Okay, for this effect, we're gonna need three to four shots. The first one is where Jordy, or your talent, is running towards your jumping track. He's gonna jump. Then you're gonna move with your camera a pan movement to the side he is jumping to. Of course, keep your camera rolling after you did the pan. And then let your talent do the landing where you stop the pan. So that's two shots already. Then for the part where your talent is floating in the air, which is composed out of two shots. One where your talent is hanging from this pole or another pole or whatever you have laying around. And he's gonna do the movements of the legs while he's floating. The last shot is going to be the upper body part we're gonna move with your arms and do your whole acting. But the most important part is that your talent moves his body. So you get the perspective change of him going from one side to the other side. And that's your shots. All the shots are taken and now we jump into After Effects and start creating the effect. So the first thing we're going to do is the placement of our shots. We added the jump slash pan shot to the composition and on top of that we placed the landing shot. Then we stick the two shots and for this we looked at the movement of the camera to align everything. The camera first follows our talent and then pans to the other side and eventually stops. This is our mark and here we want our talent to start their landing so we placed our landing clip on this very spot and made it start there. Now what we also did was a small timer mapping on our jumping and panning clip, making it go somewhat faster just before the jump and back to normal speed when the panning stops. And this remapping will also be handy to sync the timing of our next two clips, the upper and lower part of our talent. Place these two clips in the composition, make them start on the point your talent is midair in his starting jump and let them start when they have the same position. We match the legs and arms of all three clips. Of course, this is something you need to pay attention to when shooting, so don't forget that. But once the start of the jump is synced, we can sync the rest with some time remapping, like the upper and lower body, and eventually the landing. And the syncing is trial and error. Move keyframes around until you have the perfect match. But once you have that, we already have a sense of the timing for the whole effect. And we can start making our empty shot. For the empty, we are going to work with our pan movement shot. First we disable the flying talent clips and look for the point where our talent is mid-air doing his jump. Here we made a cut and scrubbed further in our timeline until the talent was off screen. Again we made a cut. Then we placed that new clip below everything and drew a mask around our talent. Of course we animated it to follow along, give it a feather and set it to subtract to remove everything inside the mask. Now with the clip selected we can go to the content aware fill tab. If you can't find it, just go to the window menu on top and here you'll find it. So with the clip selected and in the content aware fill tab we can start generating a fill layer but because we want a good result we are going to help after effects so we created three reference frames if you press a reference frame button it will lead you to photoshop here we use the clone stem tool to fill up the hole in our clip and that's really it if we now generate a fill layer we will get this new layer which fills up the hole perfectly and unnoticeable and look at that our talent is removed how easy was that now let's create our flying talent we took the two clips that will make our flying talent and pre-composed them. Then inside the new pre-composed layer, we started with singling out upper and lower body. So on the clip where the talent is hanging, we rotoscoped the legs out. Then on the clip where the talent is standing, we rotoscoped the torso out. This leaves us with two clips which we can combine to make a whole talent. But they're moving separately so they won't stick together. Now normally we would track the motion of one body part and then parent the other one to the tracking data. However, our talent is moving so frantically tracking is impossible and this means we have to position him manually. Enable the animation for the position and start tracking manually. But luckily the shot isn't that long so it will be done quickly. And look at that we have a flying talent which is ready to be integrated in our pan movement. We went back to the main composition and took the flying talent pre-comp. Then with the scale position and rotation properties place them in the exact same place as our running and jumping talent. Once in place enable the animation for all three properties and now go to the landing on the end. Here again position scale and rotate to match the talent who is doing the landing. Now of course make your flying talent in the middle of his jump somewhat bigger and position him higher in the air, making the talent fly in an arch. Now for some minor details, we use the puppet pin tool to match the position of the flying talent to both the jump and the landing talent. With this effect we can slightly adjust the shape of our talent making it match better with the rest. Another detail is adding some directional blur to the flying talent and if you also have a hard sun just like us, you probably need to paint some shadow on your talent. We easily did this by duplicating him, decreasing the exposure with the Lumetri effect and adding a feathered animated mask where the shadow should be. And oh yeah, very important, don't forget the shadow on the floor and voila, you are done.
Guys, I don't think that I'm an athlete after all. I hope that you enjoyed the video and learned something new. You know, next time if you're playing with the Olympics, you can cheat now. Well, you might get disqualified. I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you Storyblocks for your support. Go sports! And as always, stay creative. Ha ha ha, Rick and Morty. Burp. <laughs>